Ohio is a vast, diverse landscape of forest, field, and human habitation, covering more than 28 million acres. This includes more than 2.5 million acres of surface waters, from Lake Erie in the north to the Ohio River in the south, and a multitude of lakes, rivers, and streams between. From our land-based vantage point, the surfaces of a lake or river appear quite similar. The habitat and habits of many aquatic animals are obscured from our view. But, if we peer through the mirrored surface, we are treated to a world where plants and animals have adapted to living in a dense, fluid environment. An environment that offers increased external body support. This is a place where both predators and prey make use of their environment to feed and avoid becoming food. This presentation will look at the specializations of some Ohio fish species that hunt when light levels are lowest. To appreciate those specializations, it is helpful to begin by understanding some unique characteristics of the aquatic environment, and then seeing how fish in Ohio have adapted to survive in this environment. It is then possible to observe how fish use their aquatic adaptations to avoid predation, and how predatory fish have specialized to locate and consume prey when light is plentiful, and lastly, how certain species have evolved into the ultimate nocturnal predators. At sea level, a cubic meter of water is 784 times more dense than a cubic meter of air. This greater density influences fish evolution by not only providing support for their bodies, it also plays an important role in how fish interact with the environment regarding both light and sound. Because water suspends more and heavier particles than air, a fish's visual world can change dramatically over a very short distance. This is possible for the total amount of light, as well as what part of the visible spectrum is available for the eye. Descending just seven feet in this particular farm pond, the environment darkens and takes on a reddish-brown hue as available light is filtered by algae and tannins from decaying leaves. Because water molecules are more closely packed than air molecules, they are able to transmit the vibrational energy of sound pressure waves more quickly and efficiently. In fact, Sound passes five times faster and farther through water than air, and with water being closer to the same density as a fish, or in this case our camera, the sound waves are more efficiently detected. The Ohio Division of Wildlife annually samples sport fish populations to study population metrics and trends. Included in this is a small subsample of fish sacrificed to determine age, growth, reproduction, and health. This will also allow us to closely examine some unique structures and adaptations of Ohio fish species. To determine the age of a fish, Biologists look at the fish's ear bones, or otoliths. Otoliths grow in rings, much like a tree, and during the winter, the rings pack together to form a thick ring called an annulus, and this can be used to read the age of the fish. As far as the fish are concerned, the otoliths are an important part of a complex system of pores, nerves, bones, and scales, referred to as the mechanoreceptor system a system for orienting and hearing within the aquatic environment. The otoliths sit in a nerve encased lining inside the skull. Movement of the otolith within this pocket sends information to the brain detailing acceleration, 
vertical and horizontal position of the head, and responds to sound waves traveling through the water. Another important part of the mechanoreceptor system is the lateral line. Along the sides of a fish are a series of specialized, gel-filled pores. Within a pore is a set of nerve cells that bend and flex as changes in water pressure affect the gel. By reading variations in pressure, a fish can effectively feel and listen to the world around it, not just with its head, but its entire body. Scaled fish have a special row of lateral line scales with built-in tubes allowing the gel-filled pores to maintain direct contact with the water. Even in dark conditions, a fish can detect objects moving or stationary by feeling and listening using the mechanoreceptor system. As effective as hearing is, many fish also rely on vision to interact with their habitat. While hearing underwater is more effective, seeing underwater is more of a challenge. Even in clear water, light is quickly filtered and absorbed, with red and yellow colors normally being the first to disappear. Turbidity from silt, algae, and dissolved matter accelerate the absorbance and filtration of light and in general make objects harder to see. The eye of a fish is similar to other vertebrates with some of the main parts being a cornea, iris, lens, and retina. For protection, the cornea is covered by a tough layer of clear skin. The lens, though, is a spherical crystalline orb, and its shape cannot be manipulated as our eyes do in order to focus. Instead, the lens itself is moved forward or backward to focus on near or distant objects. The retina of most Ohio fish species also resembles our own, containing a series of rods and cones. Rods allow a fish eye to detect the presence of light, and the cones detect colors. The ratio of rods to cones varies by species, depending on when they are active and the habitat they typically occupy. Some species are even able to vary the number of rods and cones in response to changing light levels. Many fish eyes protrude slightly from the head, and coupled with their unique lenses, allow fish to see a large portion of the world around them. We have covered some of the adaptations allowing fish to be aware of their surroundings. Now we can observe how fish utilize their adaptations to avoid predation. Hearing nearby objects is a good way to not end up in a large fish's belly, but being able to quickly determine pressure changes allow many small fish to stay close together. This gives a school of small channel catfish the appearance of a singular, large, and intimidating mass. For gizzard shad, seeing and pressure monitoring your schoolmates allows many shad to turn, seemingly at the same time. This can confuse a predator especially when the movement is coupled with the flashes of silvery sides. For these fathead minnows trying to avoid nearby yellow perch, seeing and feeling the perch's movement helps the minnows maintain a safe distance. Many fish species commonly preyed upon, such as gizzard shad and bluegill sunfish, have developed a thin body profile to reduce their visibility. Countershading that is, dark on top, light underneath, allows fish to be harder to see. If a predator is hunting above, it sees a dark fish against a dark background. And from below, the same prey fish is light against a light background. Fish also possess chromatophores, pigment cells that can be manipulated to allow the fish to darken, lighten, color match, or pattern their skin to blend with surrounding habitat. Good color vision is vital for effective chromatophore camouflage in shallow, light-rich waters. We have observed how fish use their senses to navigate the aquatic world, and how hearing with the mechanoreceptor system and keen color vision are important for predator avoidance. Ironically, many of the adaptations fish use to avoid being eaten are the same ones used by predators to locate and catch their prey. This is especially true for diurnal predators, 
fish that hunt mainly early morning through late evening and moonlit nights. Some examples of diurnal predators in Ohio waters are crappie, black bass, musky, and hybrid striped bass. All of these species see the world in detail and color. This allows them the greatest chance to spot their prey, and for some, also to make use of chromatophores to camouflage their bodies, not to hide from predators, but to blend into the habitat and efficiently ambush their prey. For open water predators like hybrid striped bass, seeing in sharp detail allows them to locate schools of gizzard shad, and because the hybrid striped bass are also countershaded, the shad have a difficult time seeing the bass lurking beneath them. To bring it together, in Ohio ponds, bluegill sunfish are a main food for largemouth bass, and the bass are often on the lookout for prey that is acting abnormally. So when this bluegill lands in the water, any nearby bass hear the sound and feel the disturbance almost instantly. They see the bluegill and size it up. For most predators will eat anything that fits in their mouth, regardless of the size of the predator's stomach. The bluegill is not acting normally, and bass prefer to catch an easy meal, as it requires less energy and more of their meal will go to growth and reproduction. The predator has one last trick up its sleeve that depends on water's density. If you create an area of low pressure in the water, the nearby volume of water will rush in to equalize the pressure, and the largemouth bass gets its name honestly. Rapidly closing the gill flaps and forcing the mouth open creates a low pressure area inside the mouth, and the nearest volume of water rushes in, and because water is so dense, it carries the bluegill with it. Muskie employ many of the same tactics, but with the addition of some impressive hardware for slicing and gripping their prey. When the sun or moon provides an ample amount of light, these Ohio fish are some of evolution's best predators. But what happens when the lights go out? As the world fades to black, be it nighttime or because it is too deep for most light to penetrate, a new group of predators emerges. In low light, diurnal fish are generally less active. Some fish seeking cover, like these two bluegills hiding in a submerged treetop, while open water fish like gizzard shag carry on, filter feeding in an organic soup of zooplankton, relying on pressure changes to warn of approaching predators. Because under such dim conditions, a diurnal fish must rely more on hearing and feeling as their sharp color vision becomes less effective. This is where one genus of Ohio fish has evolved to take advantage of their prey's struggle to see. Within the Persidae family of fish exists the genus Sander. Walleye and sauger are native Ohio Sander species, and a hybrid of these, the saugai, is stocked in many Ohio reservoirs in the Ohio River drainage. The sanders have well-developed lateral lines and otoliths, and their teeth have evolved into rows of conical-shaped weapons perfect for piercing their primary food, smaller fish. But it is the eyes of a sander that help it become a prince of darkness. First, the eyes are large to gather as much available light as possible. The retina is specialized in the type and distribution of rods and cones, sacrificing some color vision and clarity to allow the retina to capture more light. The sander's eye has another tool available, the tapeta lucidum, a layer of reflective tissue within the eye that allows the retina a second chance to capture light. We are familiar with other animals that possess this specialization, raccoons, canines, and of course, felines. If we look at the back, inside wall of a diurnal predator's eye, like this hybrid striped bass, we observe a dark hue. This color is due to melanin within the pigmented layer between the retina 
and a vascular layer called the choroid. Melanin helps limit uncontrolled reflection inside the eye, which would result in a series of confusing images. For a fish feeding when light is abundant, plenty of melanin behind the retina keeps images clear and sharp. Turning to a sander, in this case an Ohio River sauger, we observe a highly reflective eye. This is due to the tapeta lucidum, a tissue made of leucophores, specialized pigment cells that reflect light instead of absorbing it. If we take a photograph without flash, the sauger's eye is bright. But, if we take another picture and add flash, the lens glows with reflected light. With the lens and cornea removed, we can see the actual tapeta lucidum, and if we simply place the lens back into the socket and snap another picture with flash, the lens once again glows with light. The eyes of a sander are an evolutionary marvel. That alone makes these fish formidable nocturnal predators. Add in their specialized teeth and sensitive hearing, and they could stand alone as Ohio's top night stalker. But they are not alone, for a different group of fish shares dominance of Ohio's dark waters, using an entirely different sensory capability from any we have so far discussed. It is true, chickens are not native Ohio fish, or fish in general but they do have a unique distinction. Of any known animal with taste buds, chickens have the least, 30 or fewer. So for a chicken, maybe everything does taste like, well, chicken. Cats may have excellent night vision, but they also rank low on the number of taste receptors, about 470, including the inability to taste anything sweet. Dogs do better, clocking in at 1,500 taste buds, and then humans arrive around 10,000, closely followed by pigs at 15,000. Surprisingly, cows more than double humans, with 25,000 taste buds. Researchers believe bovines need a discerning palate to be able to know a toxic plant from one that is safe to consume. But none of these animals hold a candle to the taste bud champion. Sporting a whopping 100,000 to 250,000 taste buds, catfish rule the animal kingdom when it comes to the sense of taste. Ohio is home to three native species of large catfish, the channel catfish, blue catfish, and flathead catfish. There are also three smaller species of bullhead catfish and five species of diminutive stream catfish called mad toms. A channel catfish has often been described as a swimming tongue, and as taste reception goes, that is quite accurate. The skin covering their body and head all contain taste buds, and these become concentrated on the mouth and barbels or whiskers. A close look at the barbel of a catfish reveals a surface cratered with up to 25 taste receptors per square millimeter. Catfish constantly taste the water in which they are swimming, finding food by literally tasting their way to it. As valuable as this extrasensory ability is, catfish also possess many of the adaptations used by other fish. Because catfish have no scales, their lateral line pores are in direct contact with the water, allowing for efficient monitoring of pressure changes. And catfish have surprisingly good vision for either diurnal or nocturnal feeding, their eyes mixing light reflection and absorbance features. The rear-facing teeth of a catfish are laid out in large patches on the top and bottom of the mouth. For a fish that will consume a wide variety of food, these patches grip like rough sandpaper and allow food to go one direction, deeper into the mouth. As stated earlier, Ohio's predatory fish will eat whatever they can fit in their mouth, as eating larger prey is more energy efficient. Both channels and blue catfish grow large in Ohio, channels topping out over 20 pounds and blues more than 90 pounds. But for sheer mouth size, the flathead catfish, which can exceed 60 pounds, is tough to beat. 
even a 30 pound flathead can consume adult crappie, bass, suckers, and carp in addition to more plentiful food like gizzard shad. Ohio's catfish are perfectly adapted nocturnal predators with good vision, sensitive hearing and feeling, and the amazing ability to taste the world around them. This superior sensory array place Ohio catfish on the top of the nocturnal aquatic food web, along with the night-visioned, sharp-toothed sanders. For when the lights go out in Ohio waters, these two families of fish have adapted to become rulers of the night.